so I just wanted to stop and go over uh, a few other points. Uh, some people watching are probably going to, uh, especially the, the experienced woodworkers, are going to think that I'm, you know, doing things dangerous or, or whatnot. And uh, uh, I just wanted to go over a few of those points. Um, I'm sure everybody will have their opinion about things anyhow, but uh, I'll just explain some of my methodology so you understand. The first of all, um, first point would be that we don't have a, a guard over the the blade. Um, I imagine I, I could uh, fabricate some sort of guard uh, specific for stripping, um, but uh, you know, for the for the volume of strips that I'm doing right now, it doesn't really justify it. Um, the reason why I would need to fabricate something is because uh, with the, the thickness of the strips being as uh, thin as they are, when I have my fence up and only a quarter inch away from the blade, uh, where my fence actually connects uh, is on top or, or below the fence itself. So, so I can't actually get my guard in place. Um, that creates a bit of a problem uh, just for, uh, well, for, for kickback really would be the, the main thing, um, as well as obviously, uh, you know, having an, an exposed blade. Um, thing with uh, most guards is, uh, if I can locate it. So with the guard that comes with the saw, you have a, a little piece inside that you can see here, and it's got teeth on it. So as you're cutting, the material pushes the teeth and slides, but if the, the material was to kick back, the teeth grab it, and, and it doesn't go any further, okay? Just to bring that in a little closer, you can see the teeth there, right? And you can see, you can see how it how it does that as well. Um, the other thing, the other function that the guard has is that it sets up in direct line with your blade. So as the material is traveling past the blade, you have this edge, and the edge separates the wood. So it, it opens up the wood and keeps it open. That way, uh, neither side of the wood is able to, to touch the blade, okay? And the blade's turning towards you. So that, that's something that you, you've got to be aware of, especially when working sh with short pieces, uh, that when you push the material past the blade, if you don't have something to, to help push it further and beyond uh, the guard, the blade can actually catch it and, and throw it back at you. Okay, so so that uh, brings up one of the next points and it's uh, how I'm actually uh, pushing the material past the saw. Uh, normally, you wouldn't stand to the side of your table saw. Okay, a, a table saw is a table saw and it's not a rotor, okay, although we can get rotor bits and, you know, when that happens, sometimes you might adjust the position of where you're standing. But for the most point, the table saw, you want to be in front of the blade and a little bit offset so that if something was to fire back, it doesn't fire back and, and directly hit you. So you want to be a little bit offline of the blade and you want to be standing there feeding the material through. Uh, because I'm working by myself and because I don't have the guard, uh, that's why you see me feeding it through and when I get to around here, I reposition myself and pass it through this way. Okay? And I have to be very careful that I don't touch my fingers to the saw blade, but then when I get start getting closer, you see I also I'm able to separate the material at that last that last moment, okay? Because when I cut it free, there's there's nothing in place to stop the strip from sliding that way. Now, because the strips are so long, you know, at, at ten or twelve feet, there 
they're likely not going to fire off that far at you anyway. You know, that likely the weight of the strip itself is going to, you know, hold it, hold it in place and it might just slide a little bit. I've never had a strip fire out at me. Um, you know, not to say that it wouldn't, okay, and, and shot safety is very important. But the re I just wanted to go over the point of why I stand here, and it's just to help me separate the strip from the, the working board and then pass through that last little bit, and then I'm able to clear both the board and the strip past the saw blade, and then I can restart again. So there was another point I wanted to make, and it's when you're when you're milling your own cedar, uh, it's important to really try to maintain that that tightness between your board and your fence. We've gone through the effort of running the boards over the joiner to get that straight edge, so we can get you know as nice uniform strips as as we can. You know we want to have that that quarter inch strip all the way down, and if we if we don't hold the board straight then we're going to have you know thinner parts of the strip we're not going to have thicker because we have the fence there and we'll never be able to push the board beyond the fence but we can have thinner and that'll cause problems later on luckily cedar strip boat building is really really forgiving so uh, uh you know I have had strips that have gone down to probably about three eighths thickness and I was still able to use them. Uh, but what you end up doing is sanding a lot and you're going to need to bring down the thickness of all the strips on, on the hull of your boat down to that same thickness in that area and it's going to have to blend out. Okay, So, so you really don't want to have uh, thin strips, you want to have them you know, very uniform close to a quarter of an inch thickness. So that said, while you're milling your wood, when you're when you're running the material through, what you want to do is make sure that you're always tight up against your fence, and and don't pull it out at all. Right? Always have your your focus along your fence. Okay, and make sure that that's nice and tight. Included in that is that you don't want to be pushing and have an uneven board because if I You can see that the gap if I if I'm lifting up the fence side Then the underside is going to be cut on an angle and then the next time I might lift up the opposite side and so what happens is I'll have uh, You know a, a very uneven board and I'll have thick and thin spots Sorry, not thick and thin spots, but I'll, I'll actually, the board will lose that nice straight edge. Okay, so if that happens when you're milling wood and you find, you know, perhaps it's, you have 16 foot lengths and it's very difficult to maintain that nice straight line, uh, you, you've got two options really. The first option is if you see that you're, you're starting to have a, a, a variation in your thickness of your strip, the first thing you might want to try is just flipping your board end for end okay uh, and and then trying to cut and trying to correct it with the table saw okay if if you find that you're unable to do that and it'll only take one or two strips to find out then pull out your joiner again rejoin the board okay make it a nice straight edge again and start all over all right um, you know and really that you know, you can have your joiner set up a couple feet away and, and every time if you wanted, you can just pull it out, set your your joiner to about a sixteenth, run the board again, and you'll be fine and good to go. All right.